before the guilt situation would be very messy and confusing and ultimately destructive. And I love the idea that we can witness ourselves how when we're compelled by a kind of worldly vision of what makes us happy and, uh, and, do, and do certain things acting upon that way of seeing things, that way of uh, believing, that we see ultimately it doesn't work. And we, we suffer from the way we've interpreted or the, the belief system that we've kind of bought into that we can feel it doesn't feel right to us. <coughs> That's the beauty of it. We can recognize it ourselves. The more aware we become that voice inside ourselves, the more clear it becomes. Um, my teacher, Swami Satyananda, used to use this example that you know, if the pot that you're holding gets hot enough, no one has to tell you to let go. If it gets hot enough, you don't have to think about it too much. You know, if you're still not sure whether it's hot enough, you, know, you might consider holding on. But at some point, there's no question. So the more aware we become of how unhealthy way of seeing things is ultimately not feeling good to us, the more quickly we can let go of it and just realize, wow, I don't need to do that to myself. It doesn't need to be that way. <clears throat> Another uh, thought that I had about this topic that I think is a useful kind of analogy, um, especially when we talk about the unreal. What do we mean by the unreal? Um, in the Buddhist tradition and the Hindu tradition both, there's an analogy that's used sometimes to talk about that a little bit. Um, I could ask you to think for a second. When you have a dream, a dream that feels very real to you, you may even have an emotional response during that dream. Say there's a scary situation in the dream. Someone's chasing you or something's chasing you. Uh, physiologically, your heart, right? Does this sound right to you all? Your heart may, might increase, right? You might, like, even become active in your bed. You might even call out. Is it true? Probably some of the partners could say that. <laughs> but they're counterparts. Uh, so you really, there is, a, so in a way, even though it's a dream, there's a certain level of reality to that dream. Where, to a certain extent, it feels real. And when you're in the dream, it's real enough that you really respond to it. And then, of course, when you wake up, you realize, oh, it was real. But when you were in the dream, it felt real. So there was a certain level of reality. And the, the spiritual masters say that this level of reality that we're in now is real enough to us. We certainly have responses and reactions to what happens to us here. Um, when we don't get our way, it feels like the world is coming to an end sometimes. Um, but they say that in the same way, the difference between a dream and a waking state, and in the same way that this level of reality, there isn't yet another level of reality beyond this one that's even more real than this. And when we have moments of, of being in touch with that level, then we also see that this level has an unreality to it. That um, you know, having that person like me didn't turn out to really be all that important. Well, it felt that way at the moment. And probably we all witnessed this. Sometimes things feel so important to us. There's so much charge or emotion around uh, in a relationship, for example, or around something that we envision to be our, uh, our poem. And then later, a few years down the road, we might arrive at a much clearer place about that and, and realize that was a phase we were going through and it didn't turn out to be all that important to us.